Hello everyone. Welcome to first lecture. Chapter 1 Introduction to Statistics Section 1.1 Statistical and Critical Thinking So let us start by defining some important definitions. So let us uh, study about these basic terminologies one by one. Okay. Before I move further, let me give you an example to illustrate, to explain these terms. Okay. Now, uh, let me consider the students in our Tamu CC. Okay. So, I am considering all students, this is an example, all students of Tamu CC. So, I am interested in studying about the students of Tamu CC. Okay. So, what am I interested in? What am I studying about them? It can be anything. It can be lots of things. So, for example, I can say that I want to know the GPA or the average GPA of the students in Tamu CC. So, I will be mainly studying about studying about GPA of the students, right? About the GPA. Okay. Now, we have lots of students in our Tamu CC. So, it is quite difficult for me to go physically, approach them and then ask that GPA individually, right? So, it is difficult to proceed or to approach, difficult to approach individually, right? So, what do I do? What should I do now? So, instead of taking the entire students, okay, now this is the entire students of Tamu CC, okay, the circle. Now, this big circle is called population okay this is called as population now as i said you it is difficult to approach each or each one of them and ask about their gpa so it is difficult for me to go physically and collect their gpa so what do i do is i will collect or I will approach only few people, okay? Only few people of might be uh, different majors or of different department. So, what do I do is I will approach only few of the students. Now, this becomes my sample, okay? One more thing. How much should be the amount of sample? Well, if you have 10,000 students in Tamu CC, if you consider only 5 students, do you think your result is valid? No, right? So, how much should be the good amount of sample? Okay, I can see something around 5,000. So, 5,000 students, if I... Uh, go study about these 5,000 students, then yes, my result is somewhat effective. Okay. So, sample should be selected in a good amount. Okay. That's the first question. Second question, how do you choose the sample? Okay. For example, I have like, just assume that I have some 20 students here. Okay, some 20 students here. Now, I am choosing out of 20 in the whole 20, 
I am choosing around 10 students. Okay, I am choosing around 10 student and those students will be the first 10. The first 10 student will be my sample. First 10 students will be my sample. Now, is this sample represents the entire population? Will this represent the entire population? The answer is no. Okay, so if the sample is collected in an order, then your sample does not represent the entire population. Okay, remember this because um, this is one of your lab assignment question. This will be in your lab manual one. Okay, so remember the key point is if the sample is not chosen randomly, if the sample is not chosen, chosen randomly, then it does not, okay, it does not represents the entire population. This is a definite question in your lab manual. Okay. This is your definite lab assignment question. Remember, if the sample is not chosen randomly, it does not, it will not represent the entire population. Okay. So, always we have to choose the sample in such a way that it should represent the population. Now, to represent the population, what should I do? You have to choose your sample randomly. Remember, always always choose random sample. Why am I emphasizing on this? Why should I choose my sample randomly? It is because it gives equal chance to every member. Okay, so it it does give equal chance to every member in the population or in the sample and that is why we have to choose our sample randomly okay so that was a short example uh, to describe the whole thing now let us check the uh, formal definition of these terminologies okay what is data So, data can be a collection of observations, counts, measurements, and survey responses or even genders. So, all those collecting, collecting these information is called as data. So, in this example, collection of GPA, okay, collecting the GPA is my data, okay. Now, what is statistics? This is statistics. What is statistics? Collecting the data, it's like a process, okay? It is obtaining the data or collecting the data, organizing it, summarizing, and then analyzing, and then drawing conclusion based on the analyzed data, okay? So, the entire process of doing all these things is called as statistics. What is population? As I said in the example, 
it is a complete collection of all measurements or data that are been considered okay so in our example the entire students of tamo cc so entire students in tamo cc will be the population here okay now census it is nothing but uh, collecting the data collection of data from every member of that population is called as census okay collect collecting data from each and every member of a population is called as census now what are the advantages of doing this well uh, we can give chance to everyone we will know about each and every person and also the information which is obtained by doing census is accurate okay what are the disadvantages well going to each and every person and collecting the data is effective but it is expensive time consuming sometimes sometimes it might be impossible okay now next is sample what is sample as i said you if i am concentrating only on one particular group okay one part of the population i can say part of the population is called as sample right okay so this is a short uh, this is a picture of population versus sample as you can see this is the entire population and we are taking only few of the data which will be represented as a sample okay now this is one more uh, meaningful picture where you can see we want to know the details about entire population so instead of um going to everyone and collecting the data what we do is we do random selection and that will be represented as a sample so we will be working on these data and then we will obtain the result so here the mean of the entire population is called as parameter and the mean x bar mean of the sample is called as statistic okay remember what is parameter parameter is a numerical description or a numerical representation numerical representation of population okay anything or the numbers which is related to the population will be your parameter statistic numerical representation of sample is called as statistic okay now what are the main purposes of the statistical study prepare analyze conclude okay prepare analyze and conclude so let us see this is just a outline of this procedure so let us uh, learn about each and every steps so first step is preparing you have to carefully prepare the data so while preparing the data we have to make note of the context 
source of the data and the sampling method sampling method okay so let us see the example well this example is from your uh, textbook 13th edition okay so we have a number of boats and number of manatee fatalities list. okay so here in context we must know the data which is obtained so here in the table as you know it includes these two things right now what is the second thing which you have to know about the context you must know the goal of the study so what is uh, what is the reason i'm studying this data well i want to know the relationship between the number of boats and number of manatee deaths from those boats okay so that will be my goal of study now the second step is the source of data you must also also mention that the data is from where the data is obtained from where the data has been collected now so this source of data is collected from the florida department of highways safety okay so that will be your source of the data next is sampling method we have two types one is biased and unbiased so what is unbiased if you are uh, reaching out to each individual and then collecting the data that will be your biased okay what is biased if you are reaching uh, reaching out every individual and collecting the details from them that is called is that is called as biased so here the sampling method is not biased because the data is obtained from the official government records you did not approach each and every individual and collect these datas this state this table is not collected by approaching every individual right this data is obtained from the official government records so this sampling method is not biased now let us study more about this biased volunteer response sample it is also called as self selected sample which means very simple where the individuals or the respondents themselves they just decide whether they like to be involved in the study okay so that's called as self selected sample for example if you um if you are watching youtube sometimes you you uh, there might be some ad which pops up um uh, and tells you to choose some particular brand right there will be some question and you will have some options so in that they might ask you to choose one option so that is uh, something like internet polls so that is called as self selected sample you decide to choose whether to respond or not so that is called as self selected samples this is the second step in the process now what is analyzing once you collected the data you have to analyze it right you have to make a table as you have seen in the example 
you have to make certain table to analyze the data okay so for example uh, in our class we were discussing whether to conduct the class in person or through webex okay so let us say that i have collected data from 30 students now i will represent this in a graph where on this side i can see the percentage of people who choose webex so the first 10 students they let's let me say 10 percent 20 percent and 30 percent so 10 percent 10 the first 10 students they do not like webex teaching so they might say i do not like so the percentage of them liking will be less than 10 percent now let's say the second set of uh, students they are in midway right they like webex they also like to be in person so let me see they might like 50 50 percent so i can say maybe 20 and the third set of people they say no i do not like webex teaching no har in person teaching so i can make it as zero so if you graph them okay now i will ask you what is the highest per percentage of people liking the webex what is the highest percentage it will be 20. so the highest percentage of the students who like to have webex teaching will be 20 percent see it is very easy to analyze the data if you graph th them right and that is why we have to graph the data because it is very easy to analyze now we will have to apply certain statistical methods if you have a complex data okay so this um, more information about the statistical methods I think we will be studying this about this in chapter 3 okay so just remember that we will have to apply some statistical methods to analyze the data Okay, conclude. So this is our uh, third step, the final step in EAC. Prepare, analyze, conclude. So this is the third step in our statistical process. So here we should be able to tell that the event whichever you have studied or I can say the result whether your result has a statistical significance and practical significance okay so in this final step you should be able to tell whether your result has a statistical significance and practical significance both okay now let's see what is the statistical significance it is nothing but if that event occurring of that event is less than five percent okay if the chance of occurring of occurring of that event is less than five percent then i can say that it has statistical significance for example getting 98 girls in 100 random birth well this is definitely a lesser chance right if 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 they are saying that there is a hundred random birth and out of which 98 girls 98 are girls then there is definitely a less chance to for that even to happen so that chance might be less than five percent or more than five percent so in this example it is definitely less than five percent right 
So, and that is why we can say this event is statistically significant. Okay. What is practical significance? Practical significance, in short, I can say that it is nothing but when you compare two events, the difference between those two must be more. Okay. It, it, should, it should have enough difference between two events. So that event will have practical significance. Okay. So um, that's the uh, final step of the statistical process. Now, let's see what are the potential pitfalls or the problems faced while analyzing the data. It could be misleading conclusions. That means Whenever you're forming a conclusion based on some event, you must be very careful. For example, you might be studying about smoking and pulse rate, right? So you can link these two, but when you're concluding, you cannot conclude saying that this causes pulse rate, low pulse rate or high pulse rate until you have studied it thoroughly right so that could lead to misleading conclusions second sample data reported instead of measured meaning when you are collecting data from the people it is better to take the measurements instead of asking them so if you want to know the weight of a person instead of going to that person and asking his uh, weight it's better to measure by yourself right so that doesn't mean that uh, you should lift him and check his weight so instead of asking the individuals their weight it is always better to keep an evidence right so that should be done because whenever you ask the weight of a people, they will de definitely say the less weight than the actual weight. So you must be careful while doing such a uh, type of study. Okay. Now, third one is the small sample. So uh, this I told you earlier that whenever you are considering a sample, it should be chosen randomly and also a considerable amount of sample must be taken from the population so if you are studying uh, for thousand people if thousand is your population and if you consider only one as your sample that is definitely small right and you cannot uh, find the result of your study by just studying about one person that will that will lead to misconclusions so it's better to take a reasonable amount of sample and then study next is that loaded question so whenever you are uh, surveying your survey must be worded carefully so whenever you write your questions survey questions it has to be complete okay so first thing is that your survey questions should be complete okay so sh for example here should the president have the line <laughs> should should the pre president have the line item veto to eliminate waste okay so here 97 percent are saying yes now i will uh, write the same question in another way and it will be like this should the president have the line item veto or not now see the result it is 57 percent so whenever you are doing your survey your survey questions must be complete okay 
next order of questions now uh, it is similar to the fourth point so your survey questions should be complete worded carefully in addition to that it has to be in an order for example here if you are comparing between the traffic and the industry if you are asking someone that which is causing less which contributes more or less to air pollution which is causing more or less air pollution and when you compare and this is the result you obtain they say that uh, the survey says that traffic will cause 45 percent of air pollution while industry will cause 27 percent of air pollution but while recording the answers if you if you reverse the order in place of industry if you put traffic and in place of traffic if you keep as industry okay so when you So when you reverse the order, when the order is reversed, there is some correction, just to make a correction here. So your results will be, when you reverse the order, your result will be like this. For industry, it is 45% and for traffic, it will be 45%. It is 27%. So if you reverse the order from here to here, as you can see, the results are much different. So you must be careful while doing the survey questions. The question must be complete and it should be in an order, proper order. Non-response. It is simple that when someone refuses to respond to your survey questions, that will uh, that will be the non-response. Okay. So these are uh, these are the uh, these are some of the problems you will face while analyzing the data. Okay. So missing data we will study about. Uh, this in detail in section 1.2 types of data okay now okay. so um, these are a few examples where we will have to identify the parameters and the statistics okay and also population it, it includes all the terminologies we studied in the first okay so uh, these are some examples where we will have to identify the statistics statistic parameters population and certain other terminologies which we already studied Let's um, do one by one. Now here they are asking us to find out the statistic and parameters. Okay, so out of there is a value which is underlined, and you have to tell me whether it is statistic or parameter. Out of all U.S. kindergarten teachers, thirty-two percent say that knowing the alphabet is an essential skill. So now, as you can see here, out of all, all is nothing but the population. Okay, this complete thing is a population. You are considering some amount. So you are taking something from this population and saying that 32% of all these teachers say that knowing the alphabet is an essential skill so you are taking something from the population and it is numerical so I can say this is
Okay. So uh, let us study some examples where uh, we will have to identify the terminologies which we had studied. Okay. Now, first one we have to identify the statistics, uh, statistic and the parameter. Okay. First one. Out of all the U.S. kindergarten teachers, they say 32% the underlined value. 32% say that knowing the alphabet is an essential skill. Okay. Now, remember, these two are the important keywords. Okay. When they have mentioned it as all, then it is definitely a population. It is something related to population. Okay. Now, what is the numerical value of the population called as? The numerical value of the population is called as parameter. Okay. So, if you are taking some value from the population, then it is called parameter. If you are taking some value, from the sample then it is called statistic okay so this is the population and parameter is 32 percent because it is collected from the population from the population okay second example now it is the same example but instead of surveying about all the teachers they are considering only 800 okay out of all they are choosing 800 us kindergarten teachers now if they are selecting some amount of people then what does that mean it means it is a sample what is the numerical value of the sample called as statistic Sample. Okay, and this is the easiest way to identify these things. Let's move on to the second uh, example. They are saying out of the US adult population, 36% as an allergy and a sample of 1200 randomly selected adults resulted in 33.2% reporting an allergy. It is very easy because they have already mentioned what is population, what is the sample, right? Population is the U.S. adult. So, we can see all U.S. adults. What is the numerical value related to the population? Called as parameter. Now, question is not there, but I can put parameter. We have a question there. So, 36 percent is a numerical value related to the population. So, that will be called as parameter. Okay. So, our parameter will be 36 percent. Now, what is the value? They have also asked identify the parameter and give its value. Its value is nothing but 36 percent, but you have to write this in a decimal format. So, how do you convert this percentage? It is nothing but 36 divided by 100. Use your calculator, B.36. Okay. Now, how did I do that? Percentage. So, if, if the study involves something like this, 2%, then it means that you have to divide it by 100. Percentage means 1 by 100. Okay, this is the easiest way to remember. If I say what is 3%, you can say 3 divided by 100. If I say what is 567%, you can just write it as 567 divided by 100. Okay, so this is how you do the percentage. Let's get back to our example. 
So as I said to you, this is the population. 36% is a value related to the population. So it is called as parameter. Now, what is the sample? They've already given, right? They are saying that 1200 is a sample. So you can write it directly here. 1200 randomly selected. Randomly selected adults. So what is the value related to the sample called as statistic, right? So, and that is why I will write 33.2%. Now, what is the value of the statistic? It is 33.2%, 30, which is nothing but 33.2 divided by 100 use your calculator and you have to get this result okay very easy third example why is the parameter fixed in statistic query so always remember this parameter is always fixed it's constant you cannot change the parameter but you will be changing the statistic value why why is that because when you consider the population you are going to consider all right everything everything about uh, for example if you are studying about the students in Tamil say say then you are going to uh, consider all the students you cannot change that right you cannot make it less if you make it less then that means that is a sample right so sample can vary you can take something like 100 students you can choose 200 you can choose 500 it can be 600 and so on or it can be it can be 1200 students etc so this sample choosing the number of samples depends on you so it varies so definitely if a sample is varying a statistic will also vary because statistic is related to sample so this will vary now as i said you population you cannot change the population you have to consider all all of them that is called as population so this is constant it is fixed and parameter is related to the population and hence parameter is fixed. Okay. Next. Now I will leave the other examples to do by yourself. It is pretty much what we did in the starting three samples okay so you have to do this by yourself once you are done answering these questions you can show me your answers and i can tell whether it is correct or not population sample all those things so this is all about your section 1.1 statistical and critical thinking okay so see you all in the next class uh, uh, the next class is about uh, types of data